In this video, we're going to work out more examples where we calculate limits at infinity. In our first example, we're going to calculate the limit as x approaches negative infinity of radical 9x squared plus 6x plus 3x. Now, when we first look at this, it might seem that we don't have very many options uh, to be able to help us calculate this. But if we look at this as a fraction over one and realize that we have two terms, one term has a radical, then in our toolbox, we have multiplying by the conjugate as one of the tools that we've used in the past to help us calculate limits. So let's try multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. So instead of plus 3x, I now have minus 3x. So after I multiply that out, I see that I have some like terms that I can collect. And I'm going to do two things. In the numerator, I will collect the like terms. And in the denominator, under the radical, I'm going to factor out the x squared. Now remember, here I'm calculating the limit as x approaches negative infinity. So if I were to take the radical of x squared when x is negative, I'm going to get the opposite of x, or, or negative x. So now I have the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 6x over negative x times the radical of 9 plus 6 over x, then minus 3x. So as I've done in the past, I'll multiply top and bottom by 1 over x, which leaves me with the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 6 over negative radical 9 plus 6 over x, then minus 3. And now I can say that as x goes to infinity, 6 over x will go to 0. And so I'll be left with 6 over the opposite of radical 9, so minus 3 then minus 3 again. So that'll make a minus 6. 6 over negative 6 leaves me with negative 1. In our second example, we'd like to evaluate the limit as x goes to infinity of sine of x. Now, sine of x as x changes varies between negative 1 and positive 1 and that happens forever. It doesn't matter how big x is, it's always going to go between negative 1 and positive 1. And so sine of x is never going to get close to any single number as x grows larger. So this limit does not exist. All right, in our third example, we'd like to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of the cube root of x. Well, as x gets bigger, the cube root of x also grows. It doesn't grow as fast, but it still keeps growing. And in fact, it never stops growing. It grows without bound. So in this case, we would say that the limit as x approaches infinity of the cube root of x equals infinity. In our last example, we're going to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of cosine of x over x. So we do know that cosine of x varies between negative 1 and 1, but now we're dividing it by x. And so just as we've done when we had limits at finite values with an expression with a sine or a cosine, we can go ahead and use the squeeze theorem. We know that cosine of x can be sandwiched between negative 1 
and positive one. And since we're taking the limit as x approaches positive infinity, we can assume x is positive, which allows us to divide every term by x, and then every term will be defined, and the inequality will remain the same. So now I have negative 1 over x is less than or equal to cosine of x over x, which is less than or equal to positive 1 over x. And I see that my target function is in the middle, and I know something about the left function and the right function. I know that the limit as x approaches infinity of negative 1 over x equals 0, and the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x equals 0. So by the squeeze theorem, the limit as x approaches infinity of the middle function must also be 0.